Halohydrin formation is the addition of a halogen and a hydroxyl group across a pi bond. Mechanistically, the reaction is quite similar to halogenation. The difference stems from the use of a nucleophilic solvent, such as water, which acts as the nucleophile in the second step of the mechanism. The reaction begins with the addition of a single halogen atom across the two carbons of the alkene pi bond. This results in the formation of a cyclic halonium ion in which the halogen bears a formal positive charge. Three mechanistic arrows describe this step. In the first, the alkene pi bond attacks one of the two halogens. Then, a halide is displaced. And finally, the halogen being added across the pi bond attacks the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. There are now two nucleophiles in the system, and we must decide which one will attack the halonium ion. Both the halide and water are nucleophilic. However, when water is the solvent, it is present in much greater abundance than the halide, and therefore it is simply more likely that it will encounter the halonium ion. As a result, water attacks one of the two carbons of the halonium ion, thereby breaking open the three-membered ring. The oxonium ion that results will lose a proton to the medium, and the ultimate reaction product incorporates both a halogen and a hydroxyl group, hence the name halohydrin. It is also useful to note that when water attacks the halonium ion, it must do so opposite the leaving group, and therefore this is an anti-addition. In this specific example, the alkene substrate is symmetrical. The reaction begins with the attack of the alkene pi bond on one of the two bromine atoms. This displaces bromide, and the bromine that is being added across the pi bond also attacks the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. This forms the cyclic bromonium ion, which is also symmetrical. So in this specific instance, it does not matter which carbon of the bromonium ion is attacked by water. Attack at either center will yield the same product due to the molecule's symmetry. When the bromonium ion is opened by the attack of water, an oxonium ion results, and the oxonium ion simply sheds a proton to yield the halohydrin product. Notice that no stereocenters were formed during this particular reaction, so we need not necessarily use wedges and dashes when drawing the product. In other words, this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. In this specific example, the alkene substrate is unsymmetrical, and so regiochemistry becomes a concern. The reaction begins with the formation of a cyclic bromonium ion, exactly as we would expect from our discussion of the mechanism of this step in the previous slides. Where we reach a new facet of the reaction is when we consider the attack of water on the cyclic bromonium ion. Water is a weak nucleophile, and so it will be drawn to the carbon of the bromonium ion that bears the greater partial positive charge, and that is the more highly substituted center, which in this instance is tertiary. Attack at that tertiary carbon opens the cyclic bromonium ion, yielding an oxonium ion that loses a proton to the medium to provide the final halohydrin reaction product. If we attempt to classify the regiochemistry of the reaction, we can perhaps understand it better. 
And to do that, we simply need to phrase Markovnikov's mnemonic more broadly. As the alkene carbon possessing more hydrogens acquires the electrophile during the course of the reaction. And we'll notice that that is in fact exactly what has happened during this reaction. The alkene carbon possessing more hydrogens is the terminal carbon, which is a CH2. Notice that that terminal carbon acquired the bromine during the course of the reaction. And it was the bromine that served as the electrophile when we drew our very first red mechanistic arrow in which the nucleophilic alkene pi bond attacked the electrophilic bromine atom. So this reaction did proceed with Markovnikov regiochemistry. It's also worth noting that in this reaction, no stereocenters were formed. And therefore, this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that no stereocenters will be formed during the reaction, as in our previous examples, but it is also possible that one or even two stereocenters may be formed during the course of the reaction. Let's now turn our attention to a specific example that leads to the formation of a single stereocenter. In this reaction, the alkene pi bond attacks one of the two chlorine atoms, thereby displacing chloride and the chlorine atom being added across the alkene pi bond attacks the carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. When this happens, we see that two enantiomeric chloronium ions are formed. The alkene is flat at the reactive centers. In other words, both alkene carbons are sp2 hybridized and therefore have trigonal planar geometry. As a consequence, the chlorine can add from above the alkene or from below the alkene. And that's how the two enantiomers are formed. Each of these enantiomeric chloronium ions will then be attacked by water at the more highly substituted center, which bears the greater partial positive charge and therefore draws in the weakly nucleophilic water molecule. This opens the cyclic chloronium ion. Notice that the center that has just added the oxonium ion is not a stereocenter because it bears two identical methyl groups. And this is reinforced by not using wedges and dashes when drawing that center. These oxonium ions simply shed a proton to the medium to yield the two halohydrin products, each of which possesses a single stereocenter where the stereochemistry was set during the first step of the mechanism in which the chloronium ions were formed. These two halohydrins are enantiomers of one another. Now let's consider an example in which two stereocenters are formed during the course of the reaction. When this alkene substrate is treated with bromine, the initial step of the mechanism proceeds exactly as we would expect. A cyclic bromonium ion is formed and the bromine is added from either above or below the alkene so as to yield two enantiomeric bromonium ions. Each of these bromonium ions are then attacked by water, and the attack occurs at the more highly substituted center, which bears the greater partial positive charge, which draws in that weak nucleophile. And this attack of water opens the bromonium ion. But in this instance, we must pay special attention to the fact that this is an anti-addition. 
In other words, the attack of water must occur opposite the bromine leaving group. And so the first bromonium ion adds water from underneath. The second bromonium ion adds water from above. And each of these oxonium ions then loses a proton to the medium to yield our two halohydrin products. These halohydrin products are enantiomers of one another, and we can say specifically that they are the anti-enantiomers because the new groups, the bromine and the hydroxyl group, occupy opposite sides of the ring. In summary, halohydrin formation adds a halogen and a hydroxyl group across the pi bond of an alkene. The hydroxyl group is placed at the more highly substituted carbon of what was once the alkene. The stereochemistry of the addition is anti, and since there is no carbocation intermediate in this reaction, no rearrangement is possible. It's also worth noting that a variation of this reaction uses an alcohol as the solvent rather than water. In this situation, the alcohol plays the exact same role as water in the mechanism. But as a result, the product will exhibit the addition of a halogen and an alkoxy group, or an OR group, across the pi bond. The regiochemical and stereochemical outcomes will be the same as when water was used as the solvent. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.